Yo, what's going on everybody? This is Stormsea here, and here we have the Don't You Just Hate That, which is a cute little pocketbook by Scott Cohen. 738 Annoying Things by Scott Cohen. And in this video, we will be doing part two of six, which will be reading um, numbers 124 through 246. I already made a video of part one reading pages, reading number one through 123. So if you haven't already checked those out, please do. So like I will... Like I did in the previous one, if you haven't already watched that, is I'll be giving, I'll be reading each of the annoying things through 124 through 246 and giving my thoughts on them. And I would love to hear your comments down below on what you think of some of these. Okay, so we are going to, you know, go ahead and get started. So we ended here. And so we have 124. Spending every New Year's Eve with your one friend who is also perpetually single. Um, no, I've never really done that, so no. Um, number 125. That nobody who asks you to lower it just a tad really wants you to lower it by only a tad. Yes, most people who say lower it by a tad want you to lower it a lot. <laughs> so yes, I can definitely relate to 125. And uh, 126 is uh, actually a really long one. It's the longest one, I think, in this entire book. So let's read it. Our mission statement and the steps we'll take to achieve it, the dispersion of solar rays through the meandering tubes manufactured by the Scandinavia-based Swanson Group, insofar as the Swanson Group can remain solvent while maintaining a national telemarketing campaign aimed, aimed at inundating the American public with phone calls disturbing in both their content and delivery and unleashing a wave of emails with subliminal subject headers that confuse the public into opening these emails, thus exposing them to our report about solar ray tubes. If the marketing campaign fails, then Fritz S. Streicher, president of the Zwanson Group, will fund and manage the creation of nine new casinos in Salt Lake City to lure the Mormons into gambling religiously until, unbeknownst to them, They've lost their money and houses, the proceeds, which will be reinvested into a third marketing wave, targeting stay-at-home Oprah-watching moms, explaining why it is vital to their children and their children's future and their children's children's future, as well as the legacy of their parents, grandparents, and great-grandparents, that they support the spread of solar ray tube distribution throughout our country. It is vital that the telemarketers explain that the cancer-causing solar tubes are going to be manufactured and stored in Scandinavia, not in New Jersey, which the American public will logically assume what the heck did i just read i have no idea whether to call that annoying or not i just read one really long thing so yeah that's 126 127 college students who believe hallucinogenic mushrooms aren't harmful because they're natural um i don't think i mean i think that is kind of annoying because hallucinogenic mushrooms are harmful just because they're natural doesn't mean they aren't just doesn't mean they're harmless all right, so like marijuana leaves are what's used to make marijuana. Do you think that's not harmful? So, 128. The people exercising in a gym who look at you through the window making you feel flabby and worthless. Yes, I can relate to that one. How, number 129. How Lincoln longs full children into believing that it's easy to build a log cabin. I mean, I can see that. I used to build with Lincoln Logs when I was a little kid. I had them. So comment down below if you used to have, if you played with Lincoln Logs as a kid. Number 130. People who cite group characteristics about an ethnic group, but in a positive way, such as Koreans are really industrious people. Um, I've never seen that, so no. Number 131, when the sprinkler jams flooding a small patch of grass surrounding it, yes, that is really annoying. I don't think anybody would think that isn't annoying. Number 132, a television weatherman gesturing in front of a huge map of the United States and hollering about barometric pressure when all you want to see is the five-day forecast. Yes, that is really really annoying like just get to the five-day forecast we don't need to hear about barometric pressure we just want to see the forecast gianna please leave and now we have number 133 you're you can listen if you'd like but just 
All right, have fun. All right, number 133. Not liking the gift you pulled out of the grab bag as much as the one you put into it. Yes, I have done that before. I have done grab bags, and yes, that happens. Number 134. When you hold the ketchup bottle over your french fries and the first thing that comes out is red water. Ew, yes, that can be annoying. I don't even like ketchup to begin with, so yes. I can... So I can't, I've never done that myself, but I can definitely see how that can annoy most humans. You know what I mean? Number 135, listening to a detailed explanation of how to do something you already know how to do. Yes. For example, the uh, great example of this is the safety demonstration thing on airplanes, um, which always starts with how to buckle a seatbelt. So, yes, that's definitely relatable to anybody. Speaking of airplanes, number 136, the armrest warfare that takes place when two stockbrokers sit next to each other on an airplane. Yes, I have seen that before. Luckily, I've not been part of it, but I've seen it. Number 137, late fees for a video you didn't have time to watch. Yes, I did that back when I used to rent DVDs, but most stuff is online now, and I think this book was written in 2004, so back then, DVDs were a huge thing, but yeah, I th but I used to rent DVDs until, like, recently, so. Number 138, what most skateboarders amount to. I don't know what that means, so... Number 139. In this movie, Joe Pesci plays a short-tempered short person. I don't think that's annoying. I think that's what Joe Pesci's good at. That's kind of his whole point. So I don't think that's annoying. It's just a fact. Because that's what he's really good at. So. Number 140. Hating yourself for resenting the old lady who takes forever to serve you at the donut shop. Yes, I have felt that way before. Because old people can't necessarily move faster. So, move really fast. So, number 141. That your close friend's decision to get married will cost you $50 for the engagement party gift, $100 for the bachelor party or shower, um, $120 to rent a tuxedo, or $220 to buy a, get a dress and shoes you'll never wear again, $150 for the gift, $400 for airfare if they're having it in Vermont, and suddenly you've blown close to $1,000. Well, luckily, I'm not to the age where I have friends who are getting married yet, so yeah, I don't think I get that one very much. But I can see how that would be annoying. Number 142, people who are afraid to step on an escalator, like, missed it, how about this one? No, not that one. Wait, not that one either. That one, no, 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 not that one. Um, I've never really seen anybody do that, but that can be annoying. Number 143, tornadoes that don't kill the people who chase them. Yes, because they're the ones who deserve it. So, number 144, sushi snobs who frown upon people who order shrimps, shumai, dumplings. Well, I love my sushi, so yeah, I am kind of a sushi snob myself. Number 145, when all your husband wants to do during the third day of your honeymoon is stay in the hotel room and watch the NFL draft on ESPN. Luckily, I'm not married yet, so I can't relate to that one. Number 146, people who point at their wrist while asking for the time. I don't find it annoying, but yes, people do do that often. Number 147, every time you try to focus on the positive, the fact that you can't find a job interferes. Yes, I can relate to that one. Back when I was struggling to find a job, yes. It's very hard to focus on the positive when you're having a hard time finding a job. Number 148, not knowing what deaf means. Well, of course, I don't know what it means anyway, so. Like, what does it mean? Number 149, Listening to the repulsive sound of your voice leaving a message on your friend's answering machine as she plays her messages in front of you. Well, I don't we don't have household telephones, but I have listened to my I have listened to voicemails on other people's phones before, and yes, my voice sounds terrible when it's over the phone. It really does. And now we have 150. That bacon will never be considered a vegetable. Um no, it is a protein. It is pork, it is pig. <laughs> So, of course, no, that is a protein. It will never be considered a vegetable. It is a meat, which is like almost the opposite of a vegetable. 
Number 151, the fact that a good idea, if well executed, will outperform a great idea that is poorly executed means little to you when you're someone who never has ideas. I'm a person who always has idea for stuff, um, so yeah, I'm not in that boat. So, and now we have 152, that it's the ones who love you who are most adept, adept at tormenting you. Well, of course, that's kind of your whole, that's kind of the whole point, right? Most people who don't know you aren't going to be adept to torment you because they don't know you. Because you don't know what it's like. Because they don't know how you're going to react. But the people who do know you, it's the people who know that you're predictable in how you're going to react to stuff. So... Moving on, number 153, when your kids agree that only a racist would say that and you think, gosh, that's one of my favorite expressions. I have heard people say only a racist would say that and yes, I have thought that is one of my favorite expressions. So yes, I can definitely relate to number 153. Number 154, realizing you left a porno video in your parents' VCR as you stow your carry-on luggage in the overhead compartment. Um, no, I don't watch porn, so no, I could not relate to that one. And I, I, I have friends that do watch it and are addicted to watching it and they want to stop, so they've told me that, no, once you start watching porn, you can't, so no, I just don't do it. Number 155, hating the fact that you always say, moi, when kissing everyone hello. I'm not really a big kissaholics, but yes, when I kiss like my parents and stuff, I do say moi. So yeah. Number 156. Never being able to remember the difference between a chimichanga, an enchilada, and a quesadilla. I know the difference between an enchilada and a quesadilla, but I've never heard of a chimichanga. So... Now I have um, number 157. When your reply to a question depends on your complete comprehension of a word you don't know. Yes, I ha that definitely relates to me. Ready? Number 158. Remembering how people of your current age seem so old when you were a child. Yes, I remember how old the age of 20, which is the age I currently am now as of when I am making this video. I remember how old that age seemed when I was a little child. You know what I mean? It just seemed so old, like, gosh. You know what I mean? And now we have another one of these professionally annoyed things which show up every now and then in the book. There's actually quite a few. But these are funny, so whenever we get to one, we'll read it. So here we go. Professionally annoyed. Ten annoying things about being a comedian slash comedy writer. Number one, seeing a line you wrote how you wrote show up on throw pillows, pot holders, and greeting cards in whimsical gift catalogs. Number two, when the comedian goes on who goes on before you covers all the same ideas you are planning to cover but with better punchlines. Number three, when family members who have always had doubts that you were funny are sitting in the front row. Number four, when the comedian who goes on before you does raunchy sex and bodily expression material and you you must follow with your droll remarks about the presidential hopefuls. Number five, when the celebrity who is the centerpiece and punchline of your best joke is suddenly the victim of a tragic illness or accident. Number six, when the person about whom you have written hilarious, vicious jokes is seated in the audience. Number seven, and your former spouse on a date is sitting right behind him. Number eight, having the bartender decide to blend a new batch of margaritas in the middle of a delicate joke setup. Number nine, when your best joke makes a high-profile appearance on late-night television without you. And number ten, when after all the time and work you put into thinking up new material, someone gets a large advance to write a book full of lists by other people. That's why you don't want to be a comedian, guys. It is a very hard job and a very hard life. Number 159. Only, getting back to these now. 159. Only being able to complete the tedious tasks you've been putting off when you have a more pressing chore to tend to. Yes, I can relate to that. And now we have number 160. When your car has one of those pathetically high-pitched horns that implies, it's okay, you can step all over me. Yes, I can totally relate to this. Um, I used to drive a Jeep Wrangler, and that thing has one of the dinkiest horns 
ever. So when people are in front of me and the light is green and they are refusing to move because they're trying to send a text and I honk on the horn, yeah, it does imply, it's okay, you can step out over me. So it's like that. And I feel bad for people who drive Hondas because it's not really a high-pitched horn. They might, in the Jeep, it was a dinky horn. And I now drive a Range Rover Velar. And even that kind of has a little bit of a dinky horn. I mean, it's better than the one the Jeep. <laughs> But it's still a little on the dinky side. You know what I mean? I kind of wish it had one of those air horns like in the big truck where you pull down and it goes, Meh! that kind of thing. So, yes, 160. Yeah, that's a funny one. Number 161, a sneeze that lingers in your nose and then absorbs into your forehead. Yes, that happens to me all the time. Like whenever I try to sneeze and I think of something funny, it goes away and then absorbs into my forehead. So, yes, you just want to get whatever you need out of your nose and then you can't. You know what I mean? So, number 162, realizing that your favorite part of any event, which is or the... Realizing that your favorite part of any event, the office Christmas party, taking your kids to the amusement park, is the food. Um, no, I love amusement parks myself, and I'm actually a roller coaster enthusiast, even though my par even though my channel doesn't focus on that at all. But no, I don't like food. I don't like amusement park food. I like the actual roller coasters themselves. Number one hundred and sixty three. Public restroom sinks with separate faucets for hot and cold water, forcing you to choose between ice cold and scalding hot. I've only seen this once, and it was a long time ago, and yeah, it is kind of annoying. Number 164, that your last moment of unqualified glory was in Little League 31 years ago. I'm not even 31 years old yet, but I can definitely see how an adult could feel with that, so yeah. Now I have 165. When a piece of cheese falls into a crevice between your refrigerator and the counter, causing you to spend the next few months what, wondering what is happening to it. I have dropped things between a place where it is like next to impossible to get out and I can't get it out and it's like impossible. And I have wondered what happens to it. So yes, I would if a piece of cheese fell between a, into a crevice between my refrigerator and my counter, then yes, I would wonder what happens to it. Number 166, the unfortunate unfashionability of earmuffs, and that is why I don't wear earmuffs. Number 167, one hour commute times two commutes per day times five work days a week equals 10 hours commuting per week. 10 hours of commuting per week times 50 weeks times five equals 500 hours commuting per year. 500 hours commuting per year X, like, for example, 45 years equals 22,500 hours, which equates to 2.57 years of your life spent commuting. Let's try this. It's crackling. Just put the whole thing in your mouth. No, I'm good. Okay. I'm trying to read, and that's going to dry my mouth. Sorry. It is good. And yeah, reading 167, sometimes my mom is so annoying. Like, sometimes I just want to put her in a home. She wanted me to try a piece of chicken and or pork, whatever it is, which would dry my mouth, making it harder for me to read. But no, this one right here, yes. Um, that's why you want to try to work closer to home than an hour. Otherwise, you will spend that amount of years of your life spent commuting, at least. Number 168, that pharmacies don't have a staff recommend section. For example, fruit ease stool softener is my favorite perfect consistency herald. Yeah, I kind of wish pharmacies would do that. You know, it's annoying they don't do that yet. Number 169, when a moment of serenity reveals how crazy your life normally is. Yes, that happens to me all the time. Uh, excuse me. Number 170, realizing after several attempts that you've been trying to insert a three-prong plug into a two-prong outlet. Yes, I've done that, and I feel like an absolute idiot whenever I do do that, which I have done quite a few times. 
Number 171, when your mom calls you by your corny childhood nickname in front of your friends, like, hey, Chipwitch. Okay, my childhood nickname wasn't Chipwitch, but I, but I can definitely relate to that. Number 172, rubbing your palm over the tiles as you search for the light switch in a public restroom. Yes, I've done that, and it is annoying. Because public restrooms always made me nervous from when I was a kid because you don't know how clean they are. Unless, like, I live in the state of Texas and we have those Bucky's gas stations. Those things, those are the cleanest restrooms, like, possibly ever. You know what I mean? Number 173. When the one thing you have a passion for is destroying your health. Yes, I love pizza. And that is uh, destroying my health. So I have more passions for stuff than that, but still. Um, number 174. When lice lie larvae in your daughter's hair. Well, luckily I'm not a parent yet. So I d when I was in second grade, I had lice and it was annoying. Number 175. Banana bruises that aren't visible on the outside of a peel. Yes, that is so annoying, and that's why I'm a little freaked out by bananas. I don't really mind their taste, but there are some things you can't see on bananas that... Number 176. Sensing that your opponent is more interested in physically harming you than winning? Yes, I can relate to that. Number 177. That perfecting doom whoop harmonies with your buddies on street corners is not really an option when you live for you when you live in the mountains. I have no idea. I don't live in the mountains. Number 178, when your lies multiply faster than you can remember them. Yes, and that's not annoying. That's just part of human nature. Number 179, all cap emails like, Becky, make sure you alert Sarah that Rafi's group will be arriving at 940. Ditto for Ben, Ratchard. Um, yeah, so you want to try not to send emails in all caps because that looks aggressive almost. You know what I mean? I don't like all cap emails. So yeah, they are annoying. Number 180, that I'm sorry, Zoe, the batteries were not included is not an acceptable answer to your four-year-old daughter. Yes, and when I, if I'm ever fortunate enough to be a parent, I will know that that will not be an acceptable answer to my kids as to why the toys don't work as soon as they come out of the package. So yeah, number 181, People who don't move remove their Christmas decorations until March. Yes, that is so annoying. That has happened before. You really should remove them. I think it's like 12 days after Christmas, I believe it is. So, Number 182. That celebrities who are fairly new to their fame often consult more established celebrities for advice on how to handle celebrity and that you belong to neither of these groups. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm not really a celebrity. I have a YouTube channel, but I don't, I'm not really a celebrity at all. So, yeah. Number 183. When the closest you come to achieving your dream of having a pool in your backyard is the plastic kitty pool filled with brown water by the side of your house. Ew. I can see how that could be annoying. I mean, I didn't have a pool in my backyard until I was 16, 17 when my parents moved into this house like right here that we're in. Number 184. When your father tells a long meandering joke to the waitress who is holding a heavy tray that mistakes her obligatory laugh for a real one. Yes, I can do that. And sometimes I'm the one who tells a joke, not my dad, to a waitress. And yeah, I do sometimes mistake an obligatory laugh for her real one. Um, number 185. Being antibacterial but also anti-antibacterial soap. Uh, I don't get it. Number 186. When a homely person compliments you on your looks, forcing you to either to return the compliment insincerely or say thanks without saying anything more, thereby removing any doubt that you don't find him attractive. Uh, I'm not sure about that. But actually, no, yes, I have done that before. People say I look handsome and stuff all the time, even though I'm not entirely sure that is true. But I hear it so much these days that I kind of just roll my eyes whenever I hear it. So, uh-oh, my battery's low. It might cut off before we get done. Number 187. 
that it's no longer acceptable for sailors to skip down the street whistling show tunes. Yes, I wish they would still do that. That would be fun. In fact, one, during my senior year of high school, I was a part of my high school's marching band. We did a show based off of that, where instead of like wearing our typical marching band uniforms, we actually wore sailor outfits, which were much more comfortable. So yes, that's amazing. Number 188, when even a passing stranger can look at the two of you and tell that your relationship is failing. Um, I can see how that could happen, but luckily I'm not in a relationship, so no. Number 189, accidentally setting your alarm clock for p.m. instead of a.m. Yes, I do that all the time. It is so annoying. Number 190, when missing the bus by 20 seconds plunges you into a deep trench of self-reproach. Yes, when I was in school, I there were a few times where I would miss the bus. And yes, that's what I would think of. Number 191. That Saturday, 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 Saturday night's all right is copyrighted. Uh, I didn't know what that was, so I wouldn't understand. Number 192, wondering based on his answers if the person you're copying from knows less than you. I never used to cheat on tests when I was a kid. So no, I was a, I was a somewhat good child. And in that regard, at least, I would never cheat on a test, which is why I failed pretty much everything. Number 193, when your husband, who still clings to his 60s leftist ideals, feels the need to strike up a meaningful conversation with every custodian, gas station attendant, and busboy. I'm a person who feels like I need to do that sometimes. But my dad sometimes does too, so I get it. Number 194. When the car driving behind you has a ski rack attached to the top, making it look like a police car in your rearview mirror. Yes, that is so annoying. Because cops scare me sometimes. Because I feel like sometimes they have it out for me. Number 195. That plastic surgeons are a lot more than pediatricians. Yes. That, f that fact is annoying. Number 196. People who have no clue how loudly they talk. Yes, that can happen. And I'm one of those people who, um, like, I sometimes I watch my videos and I realize how loudly I talk. I do talk very loud. And I'm trying to work on that. So, yeah. Number 197. When your lover's cat jumps on the bed and sees whether the two of you have become intimate, I'm not engaged. So, no. Number 198. Skipping work the one day your boss doesn't show up. No, I don't skip work. I'm not a bad child. Number 199. That you can't wear leather pants convincingly. Um, I don't have leather pants and I'm never even sure of those. So, no. Number 200, that the greatest expression of love most people receive is at their funeral. Unfortunately, that is sad, but it is true. Number 201, people who insist that celery has no taste, it does too have taste. So yes, the people who insist it doesn't are stupid. Number 202, musicians who go by one name, that's a common noun. Examples being Sting, Jewel, Seal, Brandy, Edge. Well, if they're good, I mean, I guess that's not too bad. Number 203, realizing while trying to beat your kid in shoots and ladders that you are the competitive creep you've always been accused of being. Yes, even when playing games like that, I've been accused of being a competitive creep, which sometimes I can be. So, yeah. Number 204, that during their lifespan, the average American falls 738 times more than they fall in love. Yes, that is an annoying thought to have. Number 205, that you're the only one you who will never see what you look like while you sleep in public. Yes, I, I'm sure I look pretty terrible when and if I sleep in public, which I usually don't sleep in public. So, yeah. Number 206, when someone tells you to have a good weekend on a Thursday. Yeah, you're supposed to wait until Friday. Number 207, overhearing someone whisper, who is that clown as you walk into a party? I have had that happen to me before. So yes. Number 208, when an audience claps to a song out of rhythm. Yes, that is one of the most annoying things as a musical expert myself. Or I'm not really an expert, but I do know a lot about music. So yes, that is so annoying. Number 209, Waiting for the pain to arrive in your toe the moment when after you've stubbed it into a leg of a chair. Yes, they are so annoying and it hurts so badly when you stub a toe. 
Number 210, pinball machines that only give you three balls. Yes, that is so annoying. But if it's only one quarter, I guess that's not too bad. But still, 211, people who admit the heh sound when trying to hold in a sneeze. Um, I don't really get how to say that. Number 212, wondering if the person who used met or... Uh, I've never really seen anybody use that. Number 213, that almost nobody scrolls through microfiche anymore. I don't even know what that is because we don't probably don't use it. Like I said, this book was written in 2004. Number 214, wondering whether the best gasoline is 87, which is the cheapest, 91, which gets the best mileage, or 89 neither gets the most expensive nor gets the worst mileage. Not really. Um, if you're trying to save money, especially right now with the gas prices so ridiculous, um, you want to do the minimum thing possible. However, I drive a Range Rover Velar, and it's one of the faster models. I mean, it's not crazy fast, but it isn't like it's. It has like higher than like the base engine, and it and it does need 89 fuel octane. So that's what I use. So no, 214. Number 215, how no one ever says, hi, dad, into the camera. Yeah, they say, hi, mom, but not hi, dad. Number 216, being convinced that everyone named Amy is part of a vile race of mousy aliens sent here from a very mean place. No, that's not what I associate the name Amy with, so no. Number 217, that no one will ever care to distinguish between your early work and your later periods. Uh, no, I don't really relate to that one. Number 218, the smell of burnt hair. I don't even know what that smells like, so no. Number 219, recalling the misery that we put our substitute teachers through. Yes, there's another one I can relate with. I have done that before. Because one time, there was this one time when I told a substitute teacher that I couldn't talk to her because mommy said not to talk to strangers. And when she goes by the seating chart, I said that I go by, like, squirt or something ridiculous. And then she calls me that throughout the class. It was so funny. But sometimes I feel bad, though, after the fact. Number 220. When your doctor asks if you mind if an intern watches your colonoscopy. Luckily, I've never had a colonoscopy. I'm not 50 yet. But I will be in about 30 years. Number 221, knowing that service people at certain uh, rational national retail chains ask, how are you today? Only because company policy forces them to do so. Unfortunately, yes, that is um, sadly true. I work at a Lowe's and yeah, our company policy um, says we should be doing that, but I do it out of the goodness of my heart. So yeah. Number 222, Seeing the non-essential things in your wife's bag as you struggle to close the zipper. Yeah. <laughs> or it's not my wife's because I'm not married, but I have seen my non-essential items as I struggle to close my zipper. So, yes, because sometimes, like, I always overpack because I have a fear of underpacking. So, yeah. Number 223, the liquid at the top of a Dan and yogurt. I've never had a Dan and yogurt, but ew. Number 224, Driving by a stranded car with someone sitting in it on the side of the highway, knowing that one day sooner or later that will be me. Yes, I have had those thoughts before. Number 225. Wondering if your boyfriend's pattern of ordering the second cheapest bottle of wine is coincidental. Luckily, I'm not engaged. Number 226. That the days when I don't know was an acceptable answer as to why you did something stupid are gone. Yes, that is so annoying because that used to be my answer all the time when as to why I did something stupid. Unfortunately, now that I'm 20 years old, the days of answering that to why I did something stupid, they are long gone. It's not an acceptable answer anymore. And now we have another professionally annoyed. These things are fun. Six annoying things about being a feature film casting director. Number one, when a director or producer tells you that her daughter doesn't think an actor is cute enough. Number two, auditioning actors who, after shaking your hand with a sweaty palm, tell you they have the flu. Number three, being called a casting agent. Number four, when your relatives ask you why you cast a particular actor whom they hated in the movie. 
Number five, when actors take it too far in auditions by vigorously miming their physical actions like pretending to urinate or drive a car. <laughs> and number six, when an actor tells you a little too much about their personal lives. See, that's why you don't want to be a casting director. Number 227, because my battery is probably going to die here very soon. People whose contributions to legal discussions consist of things like, he ought to fry. Uh, I don't really think that way. Number 228, when your child asks you to explain why water spurts out of the faucet when you turn twist the knobs. Yeah, I don't really know how to explain that. And when I have kids one day and they ask me that, I won't know how to answer that. So, yeah, that will be annoying eventually. Number 229, people who leave their laundry in the machine for hours yet get angry when you remove it. Yes, my sister leaves her laundry in the in the washer and dryer all the time and I have to remove it when I want to do my laundry and she's not done with her laundry because she half-asses it and when I go in and change it because she only half-asses it she gets mad because I removed it so yes I can absolutely relate to 229 229 is an ouch okay number 230 when after a hefty meal an abrasive friend of your parents slaps you on the back and say boy you can really pack it in eh yeah, because I do eat a lot, so I can relate to number 230. Number 231. Occasionally feeling guilty because your grandmother allows you to live in her house rent-free and you use her basement to manufacture and sell bootlegged movies on DVD. That's a terrible way to live. I wouldn't do that. Number 232. The way your body feels the morning after playing football with your friends who are also over 40. I've played football with my friends, but I'm not over 40 years old, so I don't feel that way yet. Number 233, amusement park fatigue. It's only occasionally. Like I said, I live for amusement parks, and I don't really get fatigue, so no. Number 234, applying the postage so you can mail in the payment for your speeding ticket. I've never had a speeding ticket. I've only ever been pulled over once for running a red light, and I had to go into court and pick up my ticket there. So, yeah. Number 235, the myth that scaring the crap out of someone can eliminate their hiccups. Yes, that is kind of annoying because that is not true. Number 236, being slowed down by a 35-cent toll booth. Yes, that is so annoying. I have had that happen to me before. Number 237, when nothing brings you as much joy as criticizing other people's work, sometimes, sadly, yes, that is the case for me. Number 30, 238, the myth that a rubber band can blind someone. Now, that one I've never heard of. Number 239, the second to last day of a vacation. Yes, only I don't know why most people would consider that worse than the last last day of vacation. But still, yeah, I don't like the second to the last day of any vacation. Number 240, that Anna Kariena sits on your bookshelf while you continue plowing through John Grisham novels. I'm not a reader, so no, I can't really relate to that one. Number 241, when your kid wears a glove throughout the ball game and your seats are in the most remote part of the upper deck where it is physically impossible for a foul ball to reach. I don't have kids, but I can see how this could be annoying for parents. Number 242, the vulnerability you feel while sitting on a public toilet. Yes, that happens to me all the time sometimes because public restrooms do freak me out some. Sometimes. Number 243, accidentally emailing to all when you meant to reply only to sender, creating a lifelong rift between two of your closest friends. I've never done that, luckily, so no. Number 244, being unable to twist a jar open and unwilling to let someone else give it a try. No, I don't have that problem, but I've had people ask me to untwist a jar, and I'm actually very good at it. So yes, I have done that before, and sometimes it is annoying, but it does show my strength sometimes. It is, might just because I have monstrous hands, but then again, I am a taller guy. I'm six foot two, so I don't really know. Number 245, when your caller idea reveals that the terrifying Starker calls you were getting are coming from your own home. No, I can't really relate to that because I don't really have a high, a, I don't have a house phone. And finally, number 246, the average human falls asleep in only 14 minutes. Many people who read this statistic tend to ponder it each night in bed, making it more difficult for them to fall asleep. Yes. Now that I think of that, sometimes it takes me less than 14 minutes. Sometimes it's like my head hits a pillow and I'm sound asleep. And unfortunately, that is the end of this. And sorry I was rushing through, but I wanted to finish it before my battery died. So stay tuned for part three, which will be 
247 through 369. And thank you all for watching this video. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, what are you waiting for? Please hit the subscribe. Please hit the subscribe button and turn on all notifications so you get notified every time I watch, every time I make a video, every time I make a video. Please hit notification bell so you can be notified every time I make a video. And thank you all for watching.